Hi, I'm Kevin. I'm a structures engineer with VT Aerospace Mobile Engineering. As a structures engineer, I mostly work with the structural parts of an aircraft, the parts that most people won't see, the stuff that keeps it in the air, the bones of the airplane is actually what I mostly work on. And a typical day is roughly 8 to 5 with about an hour lunch break in the middle. And it starts off in the morning typically checking my emails to find out basically what's going on with the airplane. And then it starts off with finding out what the issues are that production has. And then I go down and I do an investigation, actually getting to walk out on the airplanes and see. And I find out what's been broken, what's been drilled in the wrong place, or just what doesn't quite fit. And then I come back to my desk with that information and I try and make it all better by either making a new part or fitting it in there in some capacity. Once I get back to my desk, that's when actually the writing portion of it starts. I have to start writing instructions and I have to start describing the issue that was presented to me and I have to present the fix. I write the instructions and I have to give it back to production for them to actually implement my repair. And that's um, mostly what I do is I spend a lot of time actually at my desk uh, and in front of a computer working a lot with uh, Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel making tables and charts such that I can present the information to production in the easiest to understand terms to people that actually aren't engineers. For example, one of the issues that sometimes happens is a mechanic will misread one of the drawings that we give them and they'll accidentally drill a hole in the wrong spot and holes in an airplane, as you might think, are actually a serious issue. Um, so they'll come to me and ask, well, what do I do with this hole that I've drilled? We'll decide if that hole actually is okay to be left as it is, or if that hole needs to be filled in some capacity, or if we have to come up with some other fix. Sometimes that might mean we have to replace the part that the hole is drilled into. And because of this, the stress in my job, for the most part, is kind of low. There's not a, a whole lot of urgent, well there is urgency, but there's not a whole lot of stress. But at times, depending upon the issue I get from production, it can become a lot more serious. And that puts a little bit more stress on me. So there's spikes in uh, my stress level because certain times deadlines come up or certain issues are, are very important and very critical to the um, safety of the airplane. For people that are interested in doing what I do as a structures engineer, um, a degree in mechanical engineering and or aerospace engineering actually would probably be the best road to take. These are two engineer, uh, engineering degrees that can lead to this. Uh, most people think that mechanical is more cars, but everything has engines and everything has structures and steel and parts. So either of those engineerings actually would get you to this point. Um, Skills within computers is also going to be a very prized uh, ability because we work heavily with computers, not only um, Microsoft Word and typing stuff, but PowerPoint for presentations and or even design programs like AutoCAD and Solid Edge and um, CATIA, these types of programs for designing new parts. Um, one of the skills that I have found that I, that I think that most people don't think about is just communication skills, being able to actually talk to other people. Um, I find it very valuable that I can talk to the mechanics and find out what they're doing. Um, being able to break things down, because sometimes my written directions are not enough, and I have to actually explain my engineering jargon to these mechanics, most of which that haven't had my level of um, school. And so communication skills is probably one of the skills that I think that is most um, undervalued in my field. For me, the, the best part of my job actually is my opportunities to be able to go down to the airplanes. Um, honestly, what little kid didn't want to work with airplanes growing up, and I actually am now, and I, I enjoy that a lot. I enjoy going down and talking to the mechanics, and I enjoy being on the airplanes and seeing them and having a hand in that. I even enjoy watching them fly off, um, seeing them take off, and they even come back. We have we working with a certain company here, and they come back, and, and I get to see my airplanes again that I actually worked on that have been painted. So that's probably the best part of my job. 
Now, for some people, that's the worst part of their job because they don't like talking to other people. Um, but for me, that's not the problem. The worst part that I feel for my job is that I actually spend a lot of time at my desk. I spend a lot of time inside. Um, and I'm an outdoorsy kind of person. Some people love that, but I don't like that. The other problem that I have, or have with my job is that it's sort of a, a feast or famine kind of thing. Sometimes we'll sit and we won't have a lot of work for a week. We'll have some stuff trickling in because we're sort of in between airplanes. And then all of a sudden it gets into the big part of that airplane and we just get inundated with stuff and we're working. We'll end up with getting three new issues a day or four new issues a day and we got to get them out quickly. And then the next month or whatever, we're working at one a day and it's a lot slower. And it's sort of unpredictable in that sense because we don't know what our production guys are going to write up. So we, it's hard to anticipate what your uh, next week is going to be. Um, and in that sense, I, I don't like it. I, I would rather kind of stay consistently moving along. Not, not super busy, but not too light. And in this job, it's kind of up and down. And I know it's that way with my job and other engineers that are here doing other types. Um, it, you just don't know what kind of work you're going to get from week to week sometimes. The best advice that I can give you if you want to end up where I am is just to do good in school. Um, if you're in high school, making A so you can get into the college that will best suit you for what you are. There are certain schools that are better for engineering than others. Some are better for doctors. And you want to get into that engineering school. So you want to make sure your grades are good. And when you get into that school, you want to make sure that you continue doing good. And when you get into college, you start taking your engineering classes, your math classes, and your science classes. Focus on those because they will be used. Not every one of them will be, but you will be using your classes. And look for opportunities. A lot of um, aviation um, companies do take interns and that's a great way to get a little bit of training. You keep going to school and you learn what you're doing. It's also a great way to find out if that's really what you want to be doing. You get in there and you find out that this isn't what you thought it was going to be. It's too much desk work, it's not enough desk work, and you can get out. So take your internships, look for those opportunities. Um, if you want you could even get a job like as a mechanic working the floor um, that's invaluable experience when you become an engineer because as an engineer I don't know what they do but if you've had that opportunity you've kind of worked on the floor from the ground up actually um, that's a great experience also so concentrate on school because that's the one thing that's going to get you here without it you you can't get here you have to have a degree from a four years college, there's just no way around that one.